What's up dudes? So I just wanted to make a quick video here to sort of explain what's going on with this project. There seems to be some interest in it. And I wanted to sort of, you know, just introduce it a little bit. It's not gonna be in depth, just sort of an explanation of what's going on. So what is this project? Well, this is the Pi Quarter. And if you're familiar with my channel, you might have seen this before. This is the TR-108 Pi Quarter I built last year? A number of years ago now. It's been a while. It took almost a year and a half to make, uh, just in terms of fit and finish and stuff. This is all kind of jacked up right now. Uh, I'm having a problem with Pi Game and Python on it, so it's not operational right now. I mean, you know, it fully turns on, but uh, I don't have any fun little graphics or anything right now. Just sort of basic Pi Game problems that you just sort of come to expect when you're developing these weird projects. So anyways, this was a lot of fun, and this works, and it's great, but I'm a TNG boy, I was born and raised on it, so I thought to myself, what I really want is a TNG tricorder. So, enter the TR-109 project that you see before you, and this flotsam here is all of the iterations and revisions that happened, but I'd like to go even further back. This is where I started, or, well, mm, more specifically, uh, this is where I started. I'm lucky enough to have two of them. One I kept sort of pristine, and uh, one I just ch chunked into and broke apart and started looking how I would apply elements to the inside of it using epoxy sculpt to put things together as per other people's uh, prop replicas built on this. This is a Playmates tricorder toy, probably from, I'm gonna guess, 94. I remember when I saw this at a birthday party for the first time and I knew I absolutely had to have one. It's the coolest toy of my childhood. And it's a really good, accurate replica of the tricorder from the next generation, or at least uh, I think it's the Mark VII or whatever one it is. It's, it's sort of an amalgam of a bunch of them. But, uh, or is it the prototype? Well, it's the TR-560 anyways, but it doesn't look like the one uh, that Sternbach sort of put together in his drawings and the one they made for the pilot. I, you know, I don't know much about the actual prop history, but this is what I wanted. And uh, I, you know, originally I was going to use an Arduino, but sometime around, you know, 2010, the Raspberry Pi came into popular, uh, popular sort of attention, and uh, then the Pi Zero. And that's when I really decided I was going to take a crack at this. I was going to cut this open and, and put a screen in it and, and put some sensors in there and just glue it all in place. But then, you know, somebody beat me to it and they built one already and so that's the end of that. But last year around Christmas, I got myself a 3D printer in Ender 3 and I decided I was going to make my own tricorder and then it could be pretty much whatever I wanted. So I started building an enclosure and something occurred to me. Maybe building things on the interior faces of the enclosure and sort of affixing them in place and keeping them there permanently isn't the best plan, because then like, you know, I mean, how I gotta cut an access panel here, I gotta get to it, or just sort of like cram it all in there, hope for the best, and then, you know, that's it, that's your tricorder. I had another idea, and it was this. What if instead, I made a tricorder enclosure that had a rail system on the back, right? A rail system on the back, and into that, a chassis would slide in and out. So that's the basic, sort of mechanism of the Pi Quarter 2, the TR-109. I'll, I'll, I'll settle on what I'm going to call it, but I, I think TR-109 sounds way cooler, so I think I'll call it that. This is another iteration. I got a little further with it, started experimenting with the idea of a screen stand to hold the screen, a number of other elements, to ins and originally this was just going to be breakout boards that I bought from Adafruit that were going to, you know, just fit on there, and it was all going to fit in place. The Raspberry Pi goes on front, and then the sensor board on front of the in front of the Raspberry Pi, and then to cap it off would be the front end. And then this would all slide into the enclosure, and you wouldn't have to secure anything to the inside of the enclosure. It would all be stored in there. Well, then I decided to look at how I was going to do the opening door. You can see these are very simple hinges, no pass-throughs for any of the electronics. And then I came up with another style of door that uses these much chunkier sort of uh, 
a hold rail system. Well, no, it's not a rail. Uh, anyways, they're interlocking circles, and then there's also like larger ones that have larger channels in between them, big enough to pass through uh, enameled wire, uh, like a, you know, speaker or, my, or uh, uh, motor wire. Uh, I decided to have a custom boards built. This is the main board. It goes into the chassis. Here's a more recent one. I think this is the most recent design, except for the one that's going to be uh, printed next week. And you can see I have stands for the lights. Everything attaches to the board, and then the board slides in and out of the enclosure. Now, all that being said, uh, now what we're going to do is, uh, for the front piece anyways, is, is this sort of arrangement with... Man, I'm not explaining this well, but this will be spray painted black. I'm trying to hurry so my camera doesn't mess up. I'm just filming this on my phone. And, uh, you know, this will screw onto the front. You can see there's parts there for it. The four screws that go through the pie right into there. And then this affixes to the front. And the whole thing slides in and out of the chassis. That's the plan. Well, here's the execution. This is the Pi Quarter 2 prototype as it stands today. It's merely a prototype, it's not the final version. You can see it's got this big, chunky, work in progress front end. It's actually just held on with blue tack at the moment. This is my prototype sensor board. It's only got one sensor on it now, which is good enough for prototyping, and it's uh, not gonna stick out this much at all. I have a custom board. It's already been ordered. It's on its way to me. I ordered it from OS Osh Park. This is my inside. You can see how bad the fit and finish is on the stickers right now, but I'm working on it. And uh, the good thing about it being a 3D printed enclosure is I don't have to change the stickers, I can change the enclosure. Now, for the big reveal of the, the main chassis, if it's going to slide out nice and easy. Oh, there it goes. So there, you can see I have some wires attached, and those are for the capacitive buttons. There's only three set up right now, but there will be more. You can see the screen sits on there, and it's just free floating in there. I can take it off. And then below there, you can see all the bodging I've done because uh, I, I decided to not drive the LEDs off the Raspberry Pi itself. I'm using a shift register now. Uh, as per the advice of a number of people, including the legendary Gerard Ross, uh, he uh, has been making all the electronics for prop replica people and uh, a big inspiration on this project. His kit, I don't have it anymore. I had his Mark X tricorder tri uh, kit in like 2004 and it sort of got me into all this. So that was a big part of the electronics package uh, was uh, being inspired by other people's tricorders that I, I've been seeing on replica prop forums and groups on Facebook and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the general design of the Pi Quarter 2. Just a quick sort of look at what's going on. Uh, maybe I'll power it up here. You gotta be careful folding this thing in that it doesn't screw. And then yeah, it'll just, Right now, everything floats around, but there will be things that secure the board to the chassis on the final version, and then it will also secure through these four screws at the front through the chassis uh, t extender tabs here, and then, you know, there will be, since it'll be very compact, you won't need this big chunky front end, and there won't also be holes for the Raspberry Pi. The Pi will be powered on the lower section by a battery, and you can see my pass-through hinges there, right? So they just let you can see one of the speaker wires coming through there. It's not super elegant or well designed yet, but it works. And that's all I wanted to do was have a working one. So that is the Pi Quarter 2 project as it stands. I, I will definitely, you know, be updating my website, which is squaredwave.com. Uh, it's a, you go to the wiki and there's an entry for Pi Quarter 2 there and you can check it out or I'll put a link down below. And uh, you can follow along if you want. The goal of this project is to make a tricorder that is easily assembled by anyone. And what that means is I'm going to be giving away all of the source materials for this. The Definitely the STL for the case will be provided. Maybe the blender file. I don't know. I'm kind of precious about my blender file, but I might give that away. Um, definitely all of the graphics for the stickers. Um, the PCB designs will be available if you want to, uh, if you want to make your own PCBs, you know, you can see the, the custom PCB down in there. Again, like I'm an amateur, a hobbyist. None of this is really amazing. You could probably build your own better if you want to make your own tricorder. You know, I, I don't think this is the final word in home tricorders. I've actually 
been looking at tons of other people's projects for inspiration on this, and there is some really, really in-depth, deep-cut tricorder projects out there. This is not one of them. This is designed to be sort of not off the shelf, but really accessible for someone at my level of skill, which I don't know how to quantify that. Not exactly beginner, but far from an expert. And uh, it, it's just been a fun project. And at the end, I'm going to have a tricorder. Why don't we turn it on and I'll show you what it does. All right, so here we are, Pi Quarter 2. Let's open her up. I got to say, she's starting to look the part really good. So what we have right here is we have it operating in a multigraph mode. It shows all three main sensors, whatever you choose, as a, a graphed element. It is auto-ranging the graph so that it shows you the upper and lower extremes of all your data on screen. So you can see it's rapidly changing in some ways, uh, which can be confusing. But the reason I did this is because, and I'll show you why, if I go into the settings, if I go into the settings, it's a little bit sluggy, and I change to auto range to off, you can see that it's not very exciting. It just sort of it just sort of sits there in a line, and you can see small changes in the data, but not enough for it to be really useful. So what I've done is I added an auto range feature, like a lot of graphing software does, to show you trends more easily. So for instance, well, I don't have any way to change this stuff. I suppose I could blow in the end, but then I'd have to get on screen. I don't want to do that. So right now I have it set up temperature, Pressure and humidity, that's uh, relative humidity and uh, uh, you know hectopascals uh, pressure. But we can change all that if we really want to. I've put in here a settings panel. It's not done yet, it's not very pretty, but it's sort of Elkarzy. And uh, it lets me change, let's make the sensor one the volatile organic compound data. So we'll go back. And now you can see it's saying 804,000 ohms because that data is given to us as a value of resistance. Uh, I'm not sure how to translate that into something useful. There's lookup tables and all sorts of stuff you can do for this sensor that will tell you what that means. But of course the point of this project is not to use the BME 680 sensor in, you know, exclusively. It's to just take whatever data you get from the sensor and draw it to screen. So you can put whatever sensor you want on here, and as long as you can add it to the Python module that I wrote, which tries to be as simple as possible, uh, the graphing program will just graph it for you. And uh, I've tried to structure everything modularly. So if you hand a piece of data to the graphing program, it doesn't care what it is. It's just going to graph it for you. You tell it what the data is called, you give it a title, like in this case, oh, I'll, oh, sorry. No, I don't want to go there yet. Don't go there yet. We're not quite there yet. Oh, man, big reveal ruined. Okay, so anyways, if you want to go individually and look at each item individually, you press the geo button. And again, this is all temporary. Eventually, all of these buttons around the horn here are going to have some functionality. I don't know if all of these, I'm thinking the emerge button will be my like hardware on off button. But again, I'm thinking that might be a bad idea because everybody's going to want to press that big red button. Anyways, you can go through each sensor individually or get back to the multigraph page and see that. And then in addition, what I'm targeting is uh, for this product, product, for this project to have an AMG 8833, which is a uh, eight by eight pixel thermal camera. I do have it, it works, but it's not on this sensor board right now, so now it's just doing the stand-in sort of routine that shows you, you know, what it would look like, and you can pay, make that full screen if you really want to, and go back. You can see the buttons are really slow right now because my input handling is uh, really amateur, and it's also a very slow program. So that's one of the trade-offs of using Python for this. Uh, the screen draw calls are slow, or no, sorry, not the screen draw calls, but all of this this software to sort of interpret and write the data to screen and graph it is, is pretty slow. But um, it's worth it because, I mean, look at that. It's a tricorder. 
I'd like to break down more how this software works. I'm calling it PyCorder OS, but for now, I'm just going to show this off as a general idea of how it works. And if you really want to, there's a GitHub page. You can go and check it out and sort of uh, familiarize yourself with it. And I'd be happy to have anybody contribute or collaborate on it if they were so interested. Please drop me a line. But yeah, that's that's basically the software right now. You can see there's a bunch of sensors. Oh, I've included also the uh, CPU vitals or, or computer vitals if you want to map those to or graph them. And I've also included some simple waveform generators like uh, uh, sine wave, tangent wave, cos wave, sine wave 2, which is just, I think, a slower sine wave. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like too. Sensor 2 will make a tangent wave. Whoops, sorry. Tangent wave for sensor two. This is exciting stuff. All right, and you're gonna see it go whoop, whoop out of out of frame, and then back down, and then lower, and then back up. Um, yeah, so that's good fun. Sometimes I lose myself just looking at data on this thing. I'm hoping to get the speed up though. It it is noticeably slow. Um, there's a whole bunch of optimizations I can do, but again, I, you know, that assumes I know what I'm doing and I don't really know what I'm doing. You can see this is really small now because it had this huge jump in value here and it's auto range in the screen. Once this goes off screen, that little spike, you'll see it come back and start to, uh, start to give you a, a better picture of, of how things are progressing in terms of the trends in the data. Um, this screen needs work too. You can see there's a whole bunch of text crashing into each other, but for the most part, it, it shows you the max and minimum values and the average, the X bar of it. Okay. Device is starting to get hot. My phone's starting to get hot. Let's shut down. I just want to thank you for watching, uh, and, and taking a look. If you got any ideas, you got any, uh, interest in this project, let me know. If you want to help out, collaborate, give me a, you know, give me a shout. Uh, but for now... This is just a little taste. There's more to come because obviously there's a lot more revisions I got to do before I'm happy with this thing. But uh, this has been a pretty fun project, and I just I I can't I can't wait to share it. So uh, I I told myself I wasn't going to share it till it was done, but it's been like 10 years. I don't think it's going to be done anytime soon. But yeah, that's it for now. Uh, so yeah, live long and prosper, and uh, so long.